Hi. Welcome back to the Cena Show. As always, happy Thursday. I hope you had a great week. This is our last Pride episode. Happy Pride Month. It's coming to a close soon. So I'm drinking this. Uh-oh, Khaled. Our star of the evening. Hi. And uh, LGBT actor and singer, Liz Duties. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Oh, right. ah! <laughs> oh, it's working now. Okay, cool. You did it. Hey, Chris. <laughs> How you doing, Khaled? I'm doing. <laughs> you did it. I'm so proud of you. I actually got on this thing. Okay, I'm, I'm proud too. <laughs> We're like, you made it easy. It's easy, right? If you, I mean, Instagram has its moments. You know, it could be easier, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's why I like you. How you doing, man? You look good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you remind me of the first time that we met when you just did that with your mouth. Um, and you just <laughs> said, I was so nervous. And we walked into the office and we were doing a, a scene, background scene. And you said something to me like a little cat, like you know, the way you whispered. And it reminded me of when I was a kid. And the kids I played with were you know, a kid. And I just... I was totally cool the rest of the day, and it was a great day. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Were we on more than one day, no? no? I don't know which show it was on, but I remember there was all these files, these old real files from the police files and stuff, and criminal <sighs> crimes. And What would that <laughs> was? Um, <laughs> what show was yeah. that? Um, it distracted you from the direct. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That was fun. We were sitting at desks. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, That's that a, it's a popular show. I forget, but... Yeah, I don't know the show, but I remember where we were at, yeah. That's good. Yeah. And then we hung out the whole time. Yeah, it was a good day. Um, so you've been, I mean, that was, we did background work, but we're, you're a SAG member, right? SAG Astra? Yeah, I'm SAG. I'm yes, SAG. honey. I became SAG when I was a kid, when I was younger. Um, um, the first movie I did was a SAG movie, but I wasn't SAG. So they had to, so they got me in on that. Um, but I didn't appreciate it at the time. I didn't want to be an actor, didn't care about acting. Um, and I just let it lapse for so long. And now that I have the, my, my back in the union again, and welcome you know, back. Today, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I really appreciate it. I'm older and more mature and wiser, you know? What, we don't appreciate anything when we're little. We don't know better, you know? Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. Yeah, we have high, higher <laughs> aspirations. Everything's like, for me, it was huge, you know? Like, sex, nothing, you know? But now it's everything because I, I ta taught school you know, um, for a while, and I was in the union for the teacher, teachers union, and ah. I didn't feel like they really did much for us, you know, and, um, but the union, the SAG union, they, they like, they got, they got our backs, you know, I love Yeah, them. they really do, you call them up, they're there. Yeah, we, because you, you volunteer for them, I see you I doing do. a lot of volunteer work, and I admire you for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, you could do it too. I want to be more like that, yeah. Let me know, let me know, I'll hook it up. <laughs> I would like to. You know, everyone needs a volunteer, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so, you, so how old were you when you were, got your SAG card? You were, how old? Oh, I was, when I got the SAG card, I was, I was what, 19, 18, 19, 19 years old, yeah. Was that for your, your big hit? The, well, that was for the, yeah, the, Jack, the Jackson movie. That was your Jackson. first project? Well, that was not my first project. I've been performing since I was 10 years old. <laughs> wow. But, um. That was the first. That was the first big, like you know, national or international project that I did. Ever. So to go, so you almost segued yourself. But when you were younger, did you know you wanted to be a performer? Yes, well, I knew I wanted to be a movie star when I was a little oh. kid. I just wanted to be a movie star, and I wanted sunglasses and big sunglasses and all that. And then uh, it morphed into uh, wanting to be like Michael Jackson. You know, uh, my my older brother, with, my older brother Kevin, would be in the bathroom. Oh, you know, you know, doing Michael Jackson, <laughs> and I didn't really know that much about Michael Jackson, but at the time, but except for the ow, you know, that stuff. And so <laughs> I imitated my brother, and then I started imitating Michael Jackson. Yeah. Oh, so you, so you wanted to, you knew you wanted to be a singer too. Well, I, that's when I started becoming no one to be a singer because I wanted to be like Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. You know? Did you sing when you were younger? Um, I did. 
That's and exactly. Diana Ross, sorry, I love that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't really think of myself as a singer, but I was in the choir and they would always give me solos and things, you know, whenever it was a choir, uh, choir performance or something. And um, so it kind of hit me that I might be able to sing when other kids were, were teasing me because I didn't get a, they're like, he thought he was gonna get it. He thought he was all that. And I was like, oh, they think I can sing, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, Pete, well, so, they're yeah. jealous of you that young, right? Yeah, I'm like third bridge, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, they're treacherous. They could be treacherous, you know. Oh, yeah. And now with social media, I can't imagine, right? Yeah, now. Yeah. God, I'm, I'm not giving my child a phone until they're 21. Oh, I heard that. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> it's not happening, right? <laughs> no. so they took a, I used to, um, they, they, they took a phone from me the other day off the set of a, I was working on a commercial two days ago. And the lady took the, she said, give me your phone. It was in my pocket, you know, and she, and she put it in her pocket. And I felt like a little uh, school. <laughs> Why did she school. do that? Maybe it was bulging out of my pocket or something. I don't know. Ah, know. okay. But the way she did it was like a yeah, was reprimand. Like, I like a black school, you know. <laughs> yeah. Was she a PA or what? Uh, yeah, she was like a PA, <laughs> but she didn't realize that I taught how, that, how old I am, you know. Like, some people treat me like I'm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> younger than I am. And sometimes I'm like, hey. <laughs> Good, yeah. right? Let them think what they want to think, you know? Yeah. Forever young. Give some respect. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's a difference. Everyone should respect all, I mean, all ages, essentially, anyway, right? Yeah. Because well, I'm, so I'm set. Funny. A lot of people do, I find that. Most people, but if you're on set, there's certain sets that have that vibe, right? Mm. Yeah, certain <laughs> sets, you, you get on that. I was on one set, and I was like, I hope this movie doesn't work out well. <laughs> you know, I was thinking that. Because oh. they were so mean. They kicked a 70 something year old woman off the set, you know, because she took too many slices of pizza. I'm like, she's, she's from some other country. I don't know which country she was from, but I was like, you don't know what her life was like, you know, yeah. over there. But they were just. 70, se oh my God. Yeah. Don't even say the name of it because I don't want to get upset. I don't want to get upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so. Like, yeah, don't say the show. But the show won't do good. That's what I realized, like working on these sets in the past. They don't do good, right? If they have that energy, it's like a, it's a group effort and a group energy, right? That is something. I'm glad you said that because I, I when I want to say sometimes I'm like, I don't think this is gonna do well because I feel the this energy doesn't feel right to people. And sometimes I'm gonna say it and I'm like, oh, I pray this. Like you know, Queen Latifah. I was on the set of her, her, um, her show I and I was her. like, I didn't realize that she was even in the show. I don't watch TV really, so I don't didn't even know. So I'm, I hear this voice beautiful voice and I'm like <laughs> I turn around and it's her you know and I'm like oh and so I figured out it was her show mm -hmm. later and and I just thought the people were so kind to us on the set and I just hope it would do well you know she's the best right yeah oh yeah and then to see a woman playing that role you know like female as you know yeah. yes yes honey <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have a comment from black guys like plays too <laughs> do we <laughs> hey bruh Hey, bro, what's happening? <laughs> hey, there's not only one, but two <laughs> doing. <Huh? laughs> there's a two at the end. I wonder why. Right. Uh, so, where did you grow up? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was born in Sacramento, Rucho Fresno. At three years old, my father took me on the run. <laughs> wow. In the law, and we went hiding in Chicago. And then we came back as soon as it was all over, you know. Um, and then at seven, my mother kidnapped me from Fresno, took me to Atlanta, Georgia, for my father. And, and she raised me for a while there by herself, because um, he had custody, had custody of me. And um, then my father found us, kicked in the door, brought me back, um, and took me to Sacramento. And um, Sacramento, <laughs> he started having problems. There was problems with the law of Sacramento because he was a political, little political person activist oh. um, we had to move to LA you know and it was like the police had, had harassed harassed him so much and uh, one that one after he got out of one court trial it was like it was a hung jury for the second time the swing trial and they said well we're gonna just let you go now but we can always call this case back whenever we want to we can we can make you know another case if we decide to yeah so my dad packed a car put us in the car that night and we just drove off to LA um, and we stepped in a car for a while out there Wow. He got, had to get out of Sacramento, you know. The police was just so hot on, on him all the time. Wow. So, um, 
And that's where I really began to sing because we uh, needed money, you know. And we were uh, sleeping in our car. My, uh, well, without a, we had slept in the car first, but then he had a friend who had a small little studio, <laughs> and we, uh, one bedroom or something, and we all were squeezed into that place. And um, he could, the man couldn't take it. Uh, we had to eat. So we were walking down the boardwalk in the 80, 80s, um, and these break dancers were break dancing. And my dad was like, and there were people giving t tips, you know. My dad was like, well, you be singing all the time, Colin. Why don't you get up there and sing? And I was like, I don't know what that means. Do you have a charger? It's plugged in. Oh, oh it came out. Hang on. There you go. <laughs> you I don't want to lose you. What would I do without you? Uh, um, plug it in, probably. <laughs> now, if I start talking fast. No, no, just go go fast. back because I, once your thing pops up. So go back to when you were on the boardwalk. So, yeah, um, they were breakdancing, and my dad was like, can my son sing a song um, in between you guys set, you know? And uh, they were like, yeah, you know, and, um, I, I used to sing a song called Ben by Michael Jackson. Um, and so I just sang it a cappella, and people, people gave us some you know, dollars and clap. And that, from that point on, um, they, would let us, they would let me do, you know, between the sets. And then my, we found my own little spot on the boardwalk. We had enough money. We stayed up enough money to buy a tape, tape player. And um, we would play the music. And I was singing Michael Jackson and Whitney, uh, my, the Jackson Five songs and Whitney Houston songs. And... I started making pretty good money just in donations, you know, for a kid. Wow. You know, 80 bucks in a day, you know, tax free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Three or, three or four hours of work, you know. Yeah. Um, but you love doing it. I mean, it's probably fun unless it's like really too hot out or something, right? No, it was, it was, um, it was fun. It was a joy, you know. Um, I loved the attention. I loved, at first it was hard because I have my voice wasn't very loud. And then people were complaining, you need to sing louder. And by the, <laughs> When I finished, when I left in this beach, people were coming from two blocks away uh, off the beach saying, excuse me, can you please sing lower because your voice, we can hear you way down there. You know, wow. Too much and so, um, yeah, that's how I got. Yeah. That was Venice Beach, you said? That was Venice Beach, yeah. And how, yeah, how often did you do that? Um, I did it, I can't even, I don't, like, my memory, memory is so, uh, I'm not sure how, how, how many days a week or whatever at that point. Because, yeah. Um, you were young. Very when young. school was in, it would be like on the weekends, you know, we could do it in every day oh. at school. But That's great. You still went to school and everything in that situation. Yeah. My, we, my dad was always, one thing about him, he was always very concerned, and mother too, <laughs> about our, uh, us being smart, educated, you know, being able to read, basically, and write well. So uh, and that saved me. That's been the core, being able to read and write. Once I learned that, everything else is... So you, I, I see, I guess I could show some of these. Do you mind if I show this pic, a few of these pictures you sent me? Oh, yeah, sure. sure yeah. Uh, this is you when you were very little. Hold on. Oh, the one with my, oh, this is after we had, um, after the L.A. <laughs> building the run. But they finally, a year later, they called my dad back to court. They had an all-white jury, convicted him. It was, you know, very political. And he took us on the run with him. So we went to, ended up in Chicago where I started singing on the, on the, in the loop on the streets for donations. And I got discovered there. From there, the record label took me to New York. I got to meet, you know, Vice President Sony Records. I got to hold that Michael Jackson gold record in my hand. Oh, and yeah. that was like a moment of my, I just loved. Wow, look at that. See, he was my everything, you know, Michael Jackson. And so um, the record company owner was a house, house music. And House Music had, mm -hmm. wasn't like worldwide yet, it was in Chicago. And he was the owner of the record label and uh, my manager, and they had me singing in nightclubs uh, in Chicago. That. So, that was a showcase that we did to try to promote uh, my thing. Cool. Music. You look, I love, I love the outfit. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, it's cute, it's cute. Yeah. And then I'll show, I'll show the other one later, but. Um, yeah. So, wow, so, yeah, so go ahead. Um, so yeah, uh, Chicago. So we, uh, we ended up on the run in Chicago. We stayed there for a few years, you know, and um, and I, I was staying for a while. I got in the newspapers and I was on, on the news, and and then I won the academic Olympics, Olympics at the same time. So it was like a double thing on the news, you know. This kid, he's doing well in school, and he's you know singing on the streets for donations. And um, we started getting. I made a mistake, I think, in an interview. It was this 
my dad said this was the reason why they caught up to us because I told them, they said, what's your last name? Because I would go by the name Khalid only, you know, because we were hiding, you know. Yeah. So the fun in the interview, they were like, what's your last name? And I just said Timur without thinking. And, right. And they wrote it down. And I spelled it. I, I saw my dad look at me and I, you know, I spelled it incorrectly for them. Yeah. Um, at that point, that's when uh, the, the, my dad said that the FBI had come knocking on the last people's place, last person's house we had been at, you know. On the door. <sighs> Oh my and, God! And so, um, That's my dad. Crazy. At, yeah, at some point, he turned. He decided it was time to turn himself in. We were like what, thirteen or fourteen by now. And, you know, he um, turned himself in. And we went to California, but he had a press conference, and um, that's where I learned to drive. Yeah. Driving back to California because we had to beat the news, the the, the show <laughs> before it came on TV in Chicago. Um, we had to be in California, <laughs> so he didn't turn himself in, so we didn't get caught on the way. So um, uh, my dad couldn't sleep. He he couldn't. He was driving. I had to help him drive. Wow. Oh. You were fourteen. Yeah, thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. Um. So you were the original Khaled. What? You were the original Khaled. Cat? What? The, you're the original because there's that singer, right? The young boy Khaled. Khaled? Yeah, he's like a famous singer now. That you were. Oh. You were the original, it sounds like. I live in a like. cave. I live in a cave. He's really oh. good, and he's, he's young, but he, you were the original then, oh, that's technically. I guess so, if you say so. You if, know, the, if, you say. if that was your stage name and you were already in the news, I think, I mean, that was a long time ago. Oh, Khalid. Ago. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The singer Khalid. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I saw him, I was like, wow. So that name was meant to be on a record, you know, Khalid. And, his, and I love what I heard, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. I know you know. Yeah. Get out of here. Wait, let me show people your uh, sound. Is this uh, Spotify, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> now, that's my second album that I did. I love it. Uh, I love I the album. album cover. Yeah, Khalid Iman. And the name is What's the T? Yeah, What's the T? What's the T? Yeah. And, um, so fun. My little creative endeavor. But you had two albums, you said? Yeah, I had one before that, and it was called Colin Steele, which was my, which is uh, my stage name for acting. When I did the Jacksons movie, I did the name, I used the name Colin Steele that um, we came up with because Khalid was um, apparently, management felt it was too difficult to place me, you know, with that name. So we um, came up with a name that people mistake, mistakenly called me, Colin. So, oh, so that's how you got Ka Colin. Yeah, the waiter was like, Colin? And <laughs> we were like, okay, we'll use that name, you know. <laughs> Nice. Well, it's spelled different, but it's a nice name. I like Colin. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's all right. I like my name now. I really, I like it a lot. Yeah, you've grown to love to love your truth. As a kid, I hated my. I didn't like. I hate my name, but I hated that. I never saw my name on keychains or the little li license plate things, and uh, you know, at Disney Disneyland. Looks, you see people there. Never saw my name. Shiro, <laughs> you, know, you say Kevin, but not Khalid. And so, um, but uh, when I moved to the Middle East. I moved there to work, and I saw my name everywhere, you know, Khalid. And everybody was like, oh, Khalid, I got to tell you about Khalid. And everybody <laughs> wanted to tell me about Khalid, you know. So, and, they, and I was like a brother, you know, like, brother, you know. So oh, I was like, hey, all right. And everyone has that name over there. <laughs> yeah, that was like a very popular name there, so. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's, that's a cool part of your journey. So how, so, uh, you know, this, it's Pride, Happy Pride, Happy Pride Month. Hey, Happy Pride Month to you, too. I see. I mean, on your album cover, is that, I mean, that was uh, drag, right? You're in, in your other? Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah, or androgyny, whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, I would, yeah, I would sure. call it androgyny, but um, we, that <laughs> album cover got me fired. <laughs> is Really? <laughs> yeah, I had a job at, I had gotten a job at a university in, in Saudi Arabia, of all places. And I was teaching English. And um, for the first time in my life, I was at like this best point spiritually in my life. I was so centered. People were like, how are you so calm all the time? And my students loved me and I loved them. And I won this award for teaching. And the next day, a mass email went out to all the staff with that album <laughs> picture of me. And the most cattiest uh, things, it was, they were sick, comparing me to a sorcerer and a wizard and a rock. Oh uh, God! And um, Aww. yeah, it it became um. They didn't fire me because of that, but then the guy, the people that were putting it out, continued this campaign, and they had to eventually let me go because. No, oh, that's so sad. There, you know? Yeah. It brought too much attention. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. 
Because here in America, no one gives, you know, no one cares about that. Well, I wouldn't say that either, you know. Really? Actually. Well, here in New York, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll I mean, the middle, that. Midwest, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. No, it's really interesting, though. Um, they, they, do have, they do have a way of censoring that, that the, the video that I made, more of you, and the uh, internal affairs at the Department of Education I was teaching, they came to the school the next day after I put it on YouTube and, and threatened me. Um, Threatened to do something really dirty, you know, if I didn't take it off of the, take it off of, offline, because it had a gay theme to it, and um, where oh, this, was this a while morning. ago? Huh? Was this a while ago? This was in two thousand and nine. Yeah, that was a long time yeah. ago when I first did the um, the song more of you. Yeah. And so look how I, far you put it on the second album. Huh? You were you were so ahead of the times. Yeah, when I made the music video, it was the first time I'd ever seen a a, a music video with like. A, gay theme to it and there I'd never seen it done and I put it on out and um and but I had to take it down eventually but then some people somebody had saved it and I started getting calls from the gay uh, bloggers and stuff to do interviews about um about this you know the music because it was something that they were excited about you know but at this point um I had already left I said, I said you know I'm get, I left to Saudi Arabia and I was like I'm not talking about anything because you know, I'm not even in China now. I'm in Saudi Arabia. The music is illegal there, you know. So um, I didn't want any more attention like that. You know? Well, back in the day, it wasn't as acceptable as it is today. Today, people will love this. Yeah, yeah. I think today is like, um, it's like everybody's being so much more fluid. I like that the fluid thing because it's not, you know, it's not just gay or straight. You know, it's like people are just experimenting with a lot of things, you know, with themselves. Uh, Dr. Vivaco said, that's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so w what do you identify as, I guess, while we're on the topic of... Well, it depends on who I'm with, you know, um, because, like, I don't think, like, most... I don't, I've been around the world, and I, I, um, I don't think of sexuality the way that we think of it, you know? But, and I don't think most people in the world think of it the way we think of it. It's so black and white, and um, you identify yourself as who you, you know, who you're sexually attracted to but um, I say I'm gay or bisexual to people I say because um, I because whatever know, right <laughs> you know whoever's I'm attracted to <laughs> or right. situations can cause can make things happen you know and um, and I've, and I've this, this there have been women that I love very much too so, so right so that's ways. that's how I think I mean I'm more attracted to, I'm more magnetized towards women but I love all people you know yeah and, and, and same here. That's that's I'm more into men, but uh, surprisingly, I didn't even know that I, that, that could happen. You know, but it happened. And, <laughs> and you're just experiencing life as humans should do on planet Earth, because that's all we know. I think that, like, yeah, what we consider like abnormal here is like so normal. It's like that's what humans do. We experiment with a lot of things, you know. And um, well, we're all, we're always <laughs> sinning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go into my theories on sexuality and all that, but um, yeah. yeah, please do. It's there. it's Pride Month. It is, yeah, it's Pride Month, and yeah. and um, the thing. I don't know. When I was in the Middle East, I just felt like it didn't seem like the the, the kids who were who were gay, we would call them gay, or whatever. They, they they weren't separated from the rest of the kids. They were they weren't like ostracized like here, you know. Right. Uh, uh, they were recognized as. Uh, with who they were, and they were actually well respected in the schools, in the high schools. Wow, um, they got a lot of respect. Uh, yeah, it was it was a, it was a total different different uh, mentality than I even expected. You know, when I went before I went there. So, yeah. um, my mom said he is so interesting to listen to him talk. Oh, thank you. And Dr. Vivanka, Dr. Vivanka, I don't know. She's I'm ignoring Dr. Vivanka. Don't yeah, you, you should. <laughs> you, you know what happened last. You do know what happened. I told you. Uh... <laughs> the last night was crazy. You know, probably was. Oh, his so. night, okay. He was crazy. <laughs> so when when did you, uh, I guess, come out? Come out? Come to? When did I what, come out? What, yeah, I mean, when, I guess when did you figure it out on your own and when did you come out publicly with it? Okay, I always knew, you know, like everybody says, I always knew something was different, you know. Um, the time I was a kid, I was being teased and all that stuff and um, being called a sissy and uh, um, they changed my name from Khalid to Khalidia at the boys club, you know. No. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and 
it, I guess, I guess it made me tougher, you know. Um, so by the age of 17, I think that was the age when my dad, he started asking me, he was like, is you gay? You know, <laughs> like, what wow. that means, I thought we call you, is you gay? You know, and I was like, and I would never say anything. And then one day I said, yes, yes, I'm gay, you know. <laughs> and I like blew up in like this like emotional, and um, and you know, he was like, well, you ain't letting nobody fuck you up the ass, have you? You know, and, uh, oh, oh. and I was like, uh, not expecting not. that one, and I uh, turned and I just like left, you know. <laughs> None of your business, right? <laughs> yeah. Like a little late on that one, Dad. No. Yeah, because well, I was talking about I was talking about this with someone yesterday. Your parents probably know, right? When you're born, I mean, almost when you're a baby, you right? Know what? I always hear that. I know. I think my dad, you know, probably. My mother, I don't know if she ever really thought that. She, I don't know if she even thinks it's today. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And I think she, and now I'm starting to understand where she's coming from because I don't think the sexuality is that clear cut, you know? And um, different times in our lives, we can choose different things. And, um, and I'm not saying, no, we can choose to be unhappy or choose to be happy. <laughs> but, um, you know, for different reasons, people do different things, you know? People get married for different reasons. They, they're right. attracted to somebody for a different reason, um, physically. Um, and I'm really attracted to people's spirits a lot, you know. You could be the most beautiful looking guy in the world, but uh, I won't be attracted to you. It's a, that, that spirit, I'm not, you know, it's something I don't feel, you know. And yeah, no. I've well, felt that, that with both sexes at times. Go ahead. Yeah, you, well, yeah, you have a, you've had relationships with, bo like, boyfriends. Like, I've had girlfriends, and you connect with them on deep levels, right? Yeah, uh, um, extremely deep level. I think part of the reason why we connect on such a level was because of the repression that we've been, you know, under uh, oppression or whatever you want to call it. And then we get we were together and like, it's like, oh, somebody loves me for me and somebody, you know, and oh, you know, and, and um, that's why two weeks in a, in a gay relationship, they were like, it was two, like a year in a straight relationship, you know, you learn everything in two weeks. <laughs> the U -haul, they, and the lesbians, they say U-Haul. <laughs> yeah, uh, the first day, yeah, the first day they say U-Haul, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, from what I've been seeing, you know. <laughs> it's true, right? Yeah, it's a little cute to, a little, to stereotypes or whatever. You know? <laughs> it, yeah, they're cute, right. Yeah. So you, I know, I, well, that's why you and I connected, because we, we were very spiritual when we were hanging out. I, had, I mean, I had no idea about what your sexuality was or anything. I just, I just connected with you, because it was a child. It was like a kid thing. That came yeah, to me, we have right? fun, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, you bring that out in people, I think. I think you bring that out. And, um, uh, I've seen you in, in other interviews I saw, you kind of bring that out in a lot of people. So, well, we're, we're this is how I feel about what I why I'm almost a talk show host because oh, I look for the I, I, why I'm a host, you know, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. because I find I look for the truth in things, and the truth is to our core, we were young, and you don't really. You grow, but you never lose that if you're lucky, you know, if you if you keep the truth with you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. just more what it is. Like I just I just am a I just try to be truthful and then and, and when I connect with your truth we have fun, you know what I mean? But how is that you like how is it like I don't know what you said to you like <laughs> something you were saying. How is that truthful? But I felt it, I, I connected <laughs> with it, I knew it. Like I felt like I knew you already. Like like we were in elementary school together you know <laughs> yeah no i know I mean, we got to get back on set together but you've been you've been busy which is good right well i think you know what i think maybe our vibrations were and you know vibrating at that well let me get now i'm getting all new age and everything but no I'm please i love that's what this is about bring it bring it yeah we're vibrating on the same because we kept i kept seeing you and every time i'd see you i knew it was gonna be a great day whatever show i was doing you know and um and it always was um Perhaps because I claimed that it was going to be a great day, or perhaps because you know you. <laughs> we well, we we have we have fun. That's it. Like we connect. We you get my humor, I get your humor, and and we also opened up to each other. I remember that bus ride. But we had a very deep bus ride. I remember. Had what? Had a very deep bus ride. I remember. Oh yes, yes, I remember that night. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just driving, talking, you know, and that was nice. It was nice and refreshing. It's refreshing. When you could, I could find people like you to connect with and who listen and you're a great listener and really? a genuine heart, you know, and, and it's very clear. It's very clear. 
Yeah, I like yeah. to hear what you have to say, I guess. Uh, we did talk, it's so funny because there's so much that we didn't say that was left unsaid that was, I don't know, it felt like I understood, you know? It, I don't know, that's, um, that's just human connection, I guess. So. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's left unsaid because we're meant to hang out again, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's a million ways you could we could interpret our. My so my mom said below chemistry, you know. Ah, that's your mom. Okay. Yes. I know Pisces can. Hey, mom, what's up? <laughs> and my sister joins. It's a family affair, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> so you all right? So, what? How do you feel about LGBT and acting? Like, has it prohibited you? Um, is it helping you now? <laughs> um, it's not helping me, but uh, <laughs> it's never helped me. But um, it has. Um, I'll tell you one thing: it helped me to 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 keep to myself and do my thing, do my own thing. When people around me were um, following the crowd, you know, I, I knew that wasn't my crowd. It wasn't, you know. So I just was doing. I was always kind of weird, you know, kind of um, in my mind weird. But I didn't realize that people thought I was kind of cool, you know. I was cool. <laughs> you know, I thought I was just weird. Um, but it, I did, yeah. It, it, that kind of helped me to stick to myself. And um, there was a lot of a lot of bad things go around us at times, but the, that kept me um, kept me uh, separated. Cause I didn't want to go hang out with the boys, you know, like my brothers, you know. <laughs> you know, I wanted to I end up making money instead, you know. <laughs> you have brothers. I have. Five brothers and five sisters. Wait, what? I have single brothers and single sisters. So there's 11 I'm total? Yeah. Oh, my. And you're in the middle, you said? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm in the middle, but I'm kind of like the, my dad, like my dad raised me and my brother mostly, you know, by, by himself. Two. Um, okay. And, and so I was the big brother. So I was like the, you know, I was the oldest because my oldest brothers, my, they were, they were, there all the time, various, various times. So, um, my dad has a bunch of kids younger than me, uh, younger than me, and um, he has, I have I have a gay older brother actually. That was brother. one of my questions. Yeah, yeah. really. Wow. Oh, I feel sorry for my dad. I know he's like, ah, two gay kids. How do you have? But, um, <laughs> yeah, but out of eleven, one is ten are gay. He's handling it. <laughs> um, but um, he, my, he's bad. My brother, my older brother is bad. Yeah, Mark, he's um. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> Yeah, he, I'm not giving him a shout out, you know, he's, he, I'm just, but I'm just telling the truth, you know. He was the first, was he out before you? No, actually. Oh, wow. He, he's, he, he can be mean to me sometimes. He's like, you came out before me, you know, <laughs> and, um, and he's oh. bigger than me, and I, I'm scared of him, you know, but um, but he's uh, he's somebody that I, I look up to in a way. Um, they were protesting some, some gay, uh, I think Prop, Prop 8 or something, they were protesting at this at the Capitol building, the Senate, Senate building or wherever he, where he works. He came outside and he saw them protesting and he, you know, a brother like my dad, he got really angry and he was gonna do something. And he remembered, he said, he went to his friend's house. He said, his friend told him, come to my house before you do anything, you know, and, uh, and I'll come back. I so he went to his friend, they came back and they went on the steps of the Capitol building and they started kissing in front of all the protesters. And he told me that everybody stopped, everybody stopped, and then the person just started walking away. And um, he wow. just said it was because they saw human beings, the real, real people that they were, the real people that they were actually, you know, coming against, you know, like, but these are real people, you know. That's why, how, why he felt they walked away. You know? Wow, that's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Hmm. So I take, my brother's, he's very um, uh, smart and very, strong and he will defend himself you know? good for him good and that's good because i mean i don't look i don't look gay right so i haven't gotten flack for looking like butchy you know or whatever yeah. but i know people out there are you don't re you don't look it um <laughs> you, but you, you you know if i were to think you you just speak faintly so maybe that might give it off but that's not really a trait, like when you're walking down the street, I wouldn't think, oh, he's a gay guy, you know? Okay, I think it depends on who's looking, you know? That's true, too. That's I think true. dudes, I find like a lot of straight dudes, they could spice, spice you like right away. Or if I try to hide it, that's when, that's when, they, that's like, people say you're I trying. Walk, like, switch, right? But I, <laughs> was, and so I would try to walk straight, and the more straight I tried to walk, the more people would, would mess with me, you know, and tease me. So then um, you got to a point where I just, 
decided that, you know, the only thing he would ever respect in, in the, the hood or whatever, you know, is that you just be real, just be yourself and be real. And I started just being myself and people start messing with me. Right. And the more we're ourselves, the, the more people leave us alone or yeah. je or jealous or whatever they are. Yeah. And it could be the time when I um, I was teaching, I was at the high school in Brooklyn and I chased those those two boys around the school because <laughs> they were calling me, they called me a faggot. So I said, you got a problem with faggots? And I was on, at this point, I was like, we're going to go, we're going to take this, we're going to take this to, to <laughs> where we got to take it to, you know. So they started running. <laughs> and I'm running up the stairs trying to catch them, but they're too fast for me. You know, I need, I need to stop. But, um, but then the principal came to me the next day and he was like, well, they're I heard about what happened the other day. Uh, everybody's talking about what happened the other day. He's like, those kids, like, nobody's gonna message you no more, you know, at this school. And so, um, you know, he was he was cool in that way. He had my back in that way. You know, yeah, they too. should leave. Good for you. That's awesome. You stuck up for yourself, too. Yeah. So what, what are some of your favorite gigs that you've done? My favorite gigs? Um, well, um, I mean, for what reasons, you know? Okay, I'll say, okay, the, the Course Jackson this, movie was great. Yeah, well, okay, right, that's what we were getting, that's what I meant yeah. to get to, yeah. really. I mean, as far as performing live was my favorite thing, but the Jackson movie was great because I got to work with um with Angela Bassett, and I didn't know Wait, who she was. tell or... the audience what your project was. Oh, um, I played Jermaine Jackson in uh, The Jacksons and American Dream. Uh, it's a miniseries on, that came out on ABC back in the day. Epic, um, yeah. And now uh, they play it on uh, different stations like VH1, I guess. Or something. I keep hearing about it in different countries and they play it around. around wow. The world, you know, um, in different languages. And I heard <laughs> that somebody, somebody, the person in Canada did the French language. They said they got a guy with a really high voice to play. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he's going, nah, 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 nah. speaking really high. And, um, I love it. That's what, I haven't heard it yet, but I heard of this. I love that. So, yeah, that was, I got to work with like um, it was great because I Angela, Angela Bassett like had this magic like it was like this magic like I just wanted to be around her all the time and and I don't know what it was but it's, it was amazing she it was her first big thing you know and, uh, wow really we would talk and she would tell me that she went to college you know and and that was a plus you know um, and because uh, I was also um, planning you know going to college and stuff um, and uh, Vanessa Williams. Um, Wow. Vanessa Williams was, she uh, would always like call me, hey, come on to my trailer. You know, she was like, a, come here, talk to me. You know, and we sit in the trailer. I never knew why she was talking to me and had me in the trailer talking to me until years later, you know, and I saw her on TV and I didn't realize that she was like a, a big fag hag, as they call her. You know, she like, she like all her, all the gay men, like were, she, were her friends, you know. <laughs> and I think she saw that in me and I was, my, my manager told me I could never tell anybody anything. You know, I had to keep it in the closet. I had to walk a certain way, lower my voice when I talk, you know. Yeah. And um, it made it very hard to act. <laughs> Aww. Um, um, she would come in her trailer and she would always try to talk to me and she would be like real, like she would just start, but I would never bite, you know, cause I had to, I had to keep that. Um, Bullshit, thing. It was like, yeah. my, I made an agreement with my manager to do everything she said, you know, and she said, if you do everything I tell you to do, I'll teach you how to live, not only be successful as an, as the entertainer, but you will also have a well-rounded life. I'll teach you how to have a well-rounded life. And that appealed to me. Um, so right. I signed with this with this with this woman, you know. Yeah. And, um, and I learned, I learned some things from her, um, some good and some bad, you know. Right, right. That's wrong. Well. We all have good and bad things that we have to teach people. And um, and I was scared, you know. I became very, very afraid to to open Be up yourself. To yeah. yeah. Oh, that's but terrible. I, I think Sorry she was trying to get me to come out, you know. Well, if you ever see her, one, you know, when things get back to normal, you you better say hi to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I actually, friend, I actually um, did the friend thing of uh, Instagram with her. I printed her, and I have watched her, you know, uh, one of her thing in live streams. And I had seen her in years, and I was just, I was just amazed. You know, it's like she's inspiring to see now. You know? And I think mm -hmm. about what she went through as a woman. Now mm -hmm. I was, I'm like, wait a minute. She was like a, a young, you know, so young, and when she was Miss America, and the, the Biggest for a young girl, that's like the worst thing that could ever happen to a person. And she's she survived that and she kept going. And what she became after is like, um, she's legendary in my mind. She's like just you know, somebody I really admire. Yeah, I, I admire her too. She's and I didn't admire her at the time like that. She was just another person, you know, like, okay, right. You know, so I didn't, I didn't catch it, I didn't get it, you know. Well, that's and that's why you, you'll have other opportunities because sometimes we lose an opportunity, but others come, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. when one door closes, you know, one opens. And I learned something, a lesson that I learned in life is like, when something seems like it's, that it's bad, it's happened to me, um, 
It's not. It's never. It's never. It's always for the best. You know. And I, like I lost a job once, and and I had. I had been doing this stuff with the secret and min mind, your mind, um, making things happen with your mind. When I was in the Middle East, I wasn't distracted, you know. And I was driving and I was making these things happen. And I said I wanted, and I described what I wanted, and I visualized it, what I wanted. I wanted enough money to go to Europe and do this. And like within the next week, my whole life changed. And I was, who was a really good teacher at the school, they, they, they fired me. They let me go. And they said, but if you, if you resign, we'll give you all this money, like $20,000. It was enough money to do. Well, at the time, I was, my, my ego was bruised. And I just started, I just said, forget it. And I just, you know, tried to travel, spending money and just acting crazy. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize until a few years later that the universe had given me everything that I asked for. I said, I, and that job was very stressful. And I really wanted to be out of that job. But my ego, you know, was saying, oh, how could they, you know, who do they, don't they know who I am? You know, that kind of thing. But two years later, I saw, I thought about it. They gave me everything. The universe was giving me what I wanted, but I just didn't see that. You know, I lost faith. You know? Yeah, no, less lessons. Um, and that, and that's, we all have our, our big lessons. It was that, was that your deep quote or enlightenment experience or not? My what deep enlightenment experience? Oh no, I have, I have a terrible so enlightenment experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's out, you've already told me a bunch, so. Yeah. Um, a lot of experiences that kind of show me that there's, um, something, I don't know. I, I think it's my ancestors. I don't know. Some, you know, they, I heard this song, um, I'm not really, I'm not like, I don't follow any particular religion, but they say, uh, God will put two angels right beside you when you walk and they walk alone, you know? And I feel like that. It's, oh, that's your deep quote? Like, two, like I, feel, I feel like there's like always been these, something beside me um, protecting me and pushing and guiding me. And, um, and, I, and I get off, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but that time I was driving in the Middle East and I was uh, driving along the beach and it was pitch dark. And all of a sudden, um, well, they were doing construction. I just stopped my car for some reason. And I got out and I looked at the beach for a second. I said, why did I stop? You know, and I took the beach. And then I looked in front of my car. There's a big hole in the ground it, it, where they were like, where they would dig a hole to put a house, you know. And there's no signs. It's not like America where they have to put signs and stuff. I was going to drive right into that hole. And I had no idea. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, because it was so, there was a drop. Oh it was God. just a straight, like, you know, it was like, a, you know. Uh. A ditch, or a big ditch, yeah, yeah, wow. You know, that's just one thing, you know, that it's like, um, but I don't play with, uh, <laughs> I try to, I, you know, I try to take care of myself, you know. Well, that's in instinct, but you respect the um, the good the good of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think no matter, what, sometimes I think whatever our purpose is here, my purpose or is going to be fulfilled no matter what, you know, it's going to be done. Whatever mistakes I make will be part of it. <laughs> well, balance. When's your birthday? May 13th. What sign is that? Taurus. It's Taurus. Uh, makes sense. <laughs> well, Libra, I'm a Libra, September 28th. Taurus and Libra are very good together. I think we're good together. We are. I know we are. If you look it we're up, bad. Libra. We're bad. We're all we're bad. bad. <laughs> Shoot. I know. We got to film our own thing. You know, that's what we need to be doing. Um, I'm going to show this picture while I have it up. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yes. That's Jermaine Jackson in the middle. And that's yeah. Jermaine Jackson's real son, Jermaine Jr. And that's me. Well, I played the older version of Jermaine and his son played the younger version of him. Wow. And, and I'm going to tell you, I've got to tell you that Jackson, Jermaine Jackson was one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. His mother, they were all really nice. Like, and it wasn't like fake Hollywood nice. It's just like, just real nice. Jermaine Jackson would talk to me and he would fix my hair sometimes. No, I would do my hair like this, you know. And um, I learned a lot about him. He had a lot of style. Uh, I mean, he had all kinds of hairstyles. And that was like me growing up. I always had different hairstyles. Um, and, um, but he was a womanizer. I wasn't a womanizer. <laughs> um, <but laughs> a lot the, of opposite, the opposite. Women loved him, Women loved him <laughs> apparently. Um, and um, he, he was nice to me. And uh, his mother their mo was really nice to me, um, Catherine Jackson. I was just sitting there watching TV with her, and she was just like a regular person. She didn't even, I mean, I could have been a mass murderer, you know. They just nobody was afraid of me. <laughs> like, yeah, you're a yet little guy. Over, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. actually wrote my recommendation for um, wrote me a recommendation for college when I went to, when I got into UCLA. Wow. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with him, or is it too long ago? Or um, it's been too long. Um, too long ago. I. I I haven't kept in touch with uh, a lot of people. 
uh, the few people that are my close friends, they're still in LA and yeah. we do talk. But um, most of the of that is just like when you finish the job, it's, the job is over, you know, usually. Uh, I did babysit his, his uh, kids a little bit for a while, uh, two of his sons. Wow. Yeah, me and Leah, this woman who was, high, who was living at his house. I'm, I'm talking too much now. <laughs> no, that's so cool. House, yeah, at the Jackson House. Yeah, I mean, that was, this yeah, was a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, they were really close to the royal family. Of, uh, uh, well, uh, the Princess of Gabon, you know, this African country. And, um, and so I got to know Leah Gabon, and she was very uh, nice to me, very kind. And, and she basically told, let me know that I was like, I was studying French, but she's like, we have to speak five, we have to speak five languages. We have to because we live in all these different countries Switzerland, you know, the Gold Coast, all these. They had, you know, that kind of lifestyle. So, right. um, I would practice my French on her, and she would just <laughs> she would teach me the way that they really would say it, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so she was cool. Um, yeah. So did you? So you lived in LA at the time? I was living in LA. Yeah, I moved from Sacramento to Los Angeles um, uh, after my dad turned himself in from Chicago. We went to Sacramento, and then we left all that behind. Um, my family they didn't want me dealing with those people, you know, industry people, and my dad got out of when he got out of he got out, I was performing at Black Family Day at UC Davis, um, and my dad showed up in the audience, he was there, and, um, and uh, I, met, I met a man who became like my big brother, another big brother, who's been like, throughout my life, he's been like this um, <laughs> amazing, amazing brother, brother. Um, and um, he's going through, a, yeah, he's here right in a, California right now, but he, he went to Japan and I followed him. I went to Japan because of him, you know, wow. he's very smart. And, um, and yeah, that was a magical day. I think. And then my dad, uh, my manager, I got a manager and he moved us to LA, you know, and we moved to uh, this area called Sherman Oaks. I love Sherman area. Oaks. Yeah. Oh, well, oh I, I lived, I lived in Sherman Oaks actually. <laughs> well, we moved from the projects to Sherman Oaks. Okay. And, um, and so then my friend lives in, in Encino, and I didn't realize, like, he lived, like, right near Michael Jackson's house. Um, we were riding our bikes together, you know? And I would go to his house all the time, and they, and they had a maid. And so I said, can I use your phone to make a long-distance phone call was, like, a, was a lot of money, you know, right. to us. But they were like, yeah, you can make me call your friend. I'll call my, my cousin Reggie in uh, Sacramento. And, um, and his mother always tells me, she says, I remember that day you called him, and you said, I love it. L.A. is so great. Even the poor people have maids. Because oh. I, and I thought that they were poor, like, you know, and I realize now that, um, no, they were not poor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took years later, and then finally, like, my friend was like, yo, <laughs> you, know, you see over that gate, Michael Jackson used to live, we could look into his yard, backyard, <laughs> and that, or behind us. <laughs> well, what's, right, what's, what is poor, though? It's like, what is success, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess poor me. Poor is live is homeless on the street because if you have a roof over your head, you're not poor. You know what I mean? Yeah, but 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 in America, you know, like we live in you live in the projects, you're poor. You know, that's what that's quote unquote. The not to me because mama. what they're doing with the minimum wage and it, well, I'm not talking politics, but no, you no, know, actually, anyway, no. right? You're right. You know what? Actually, poor. Because I here I am looking at this woman, these people that are rich, they have maids, and I don't see that they're rich. I, see, I just see what I'm used to thinking of of my friends as being, as people around me as being. Monetarily rich. Too. Having, yeah. And so I say, you know, even poor people have, yeah, I wasn't thinking. Uh, yeah. Well, they're rich in means. different ways, right, exactly. Yeah. Well, There's money. Many money. different levels of poverty. Rich, it, rich um, um, materialistically, I guess, rich, right? Well, that's the thing. That's actually one thing that I have a, I have an issue with because one of my closest uh, friends, well, probably my best friend, um, of all time, he, he he always says, if I oh if I just had money, you know, everything would be all right, you know, and if I, and I always tell him, dude, I, I've had more money than I know what to do with in my time in my life, and it doesn't make it doesn't change things like that, you know. If you're not happy now, you're not gonna be. Happy. And he's like, well, I would like to try, it, you know. <laughs> so, um, but I remember I was in Abu Dhabi. I was nice. Overseas. That's a very wealthy place, yeah. Yeah, very overseas, and they were paying me a lot of money, and I made, was making more money than I knew what to do with it. I ever had in my pocket, you know. And um, I was driving this new car that I bought, and I'm lonely as hell, you know. But I would drive around, and I and I remember I drove drove to where the these, the lower class, the, 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 it's like kind of a class system there, and um, these people, they, hmm. they six people with a plate of rice, they were walking with it, 
and they were carrying it to eat together to share this plate of rice. Mm. They had such joy on their faces looking at each other. And I said to myself, oh my God, that's the secret. That's it right there, you know. That's the secret of joy, you know. It's like connecting the connection that we have with other people, you know, because they were happier than I was, you know. Um, mm. you know money can buy me buy you escape. And it had, you know, but, I actually had that thought not long before I started the show with you today. It was like, people are happiness, right? Connection is happiness. That's it. That's what I believe. That's what I, from what I've seen, that's what I believe. You know? And that's why COVID knocked us all out because we were lost of this connection. Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing to me because um, I, a lot of, I found out that a lot of people were doing a lot more staying inside than I was doing, you know, and, um, and I was still going out and getting out, you know, doing my thing and not really worried too much about anything um, until, I mean, I never really worried too much, um, but I was walking past a funeral home one day and the funeral, the owner of the funeral home started yelling at me to put on, get a mask, and, and he was like, you know how many bodies I have in this building right now? I have too many, there's, and I got 200 more bodies waiting, but we can't even fit them. You know, he's like yelling at me, and at that point, you know, that's when I started to wear my mask, you know, and, um, you know, at least out of respect. You know, that was in the beginning, right? And that was in the beginning, yeah. Yeah. Um, at least out of respect, you know, I started right. doing that. Yeah, so. Um, and it's scary because nobody knows that stuff. Nobody, I don't understand how, what this is all about, you know, so. Listen. It has many meaning, much meaning to it, I'll say. Yeah. Uh, people say, I, I, I believe in conspiracies. I believe there are conspiracies <laughs> out there. You know, I don't know what this is one or not. <laughs> I mean, I, I have my theories on it, too. I think it could, it could be, but how will we know, right? Right. How will right. we know? I hope we find out. What a great uh, conclusion to this will. whole thing, right? We probably will find out one day. Yeah, I would like some uh, closure on COVID. <laughs> yeah, we're going to close. That's how we're going to handle the COVID. Let me see. Yeah, there's some ideas. My relationship with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Yeah, I don't have a relationship with COVID personally. It's over. You know people that do. And, I, and people have told me that they would never speak to me if I don't take this seriously because they know so many people who died. Oh, I know. God bless. Obviously, God bless those well, who right. lost. I give them respect. <laughs> right, of course, of course. But uh, it would be nice if they could leave us alone now. I'm trying to think of all the things you sing on your records. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just hanging. So, what? Who are some of your favorite uh, actors and uh, favorite films? Oh man, it's so hard. But I was, okay, I'm just going. First that comes to mind is Color Purple and um, Nice and The Shawshank Redemption. Yes. Um, anything by directed by Hector Babenco, Brazilian movies. You know, almost every one of his movies is just amazing. Um, and um, I'm gonna rush hour. I mean, I like I like real funny stuff, like like the, the duo, you know, rush hour that that chemistry they had, you know. Those kind of I love movies. those cop, those buddy cop movies too. Yeah, but I have to say, Shark 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 Redemption was like that. Just I I play that for my students every 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 year, and I'd also play um, a movie called This is one of my favorite all time movies, produced by Barry Gordy actually, and it's called The Last Dragon. Um, and I learned something about, uh, well, I, my theory is that Barry Gordy had a, a purpose for his movies that he was making. He, he was to uplift people. And he was, they talk about like the, the glow and these spiritual things in this movie. It's, it's Kung Fu movie, you know, it's about a black, black, black. It's a rip off of Bruce Lee, his name is Bruce Leroy, you know. And it's comedy, but I got a lot of meaning out of that, you know, about um, a, lot of, a lot of that. And I the Last the Dragon. Movie. Yeah, The Last Dragon. And, um, and, um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Well, I think the the most successful uh, artists, like filmmakers, um, are looking to to give a message of meaning. You know the okay. the movies that I mean, comedy. Uh, you know, it has its moments. If they're good writers, they know how to find the meaning. You know. Yeah. Ma Mac the said, "Show enough." Show enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad is. Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that that was, and also if you know, it's like that movie. Then you had like Star Wars. There was this theme about the Force and this, you know, this, this like you know, something you might call God or the Force or whatever you want to call it is bigger than us. You know, right. that, can, that can make anything happen. You can do things with. And um, 
I kind of think there's something to that, um, which is probably why people. Oh, it's so it's huge. That's why it's huge because there's uh, tons of meaning, right? You know, once you get that focus and that right, that, and you stay focused on something, I think you can really make it happen. You know, and uh, one thing that that happens here, I think, in our, in our country is, is a lot of countries actually is we're distracted by so many things, you know? and I get distracted very easily. Or we all do. I blame this device we're on right now. I blame your phone for everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Um, if we stay focused on something, you know, we can do a lot. You know? Yeah, that's true. But I, I, that's why we hire personal coaches and private coaches <laughs> to keep us in line. Well, if I could, I, you know, if I had it like that, I would. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's a good investment, right? If you ever get like a few extra hundred bucks, you could just be like, I need a personal assistant to keep me in line. I mean, think about it. You, you put a little money to that guy, that guy could probably help you make millions of dollars. Exactly. You know what exactly. That's what it's about, right? That's what it is. A little bit goes a long way. Yeah. Um, uh, this time, this day and age where all these different jobs and different people are creating these, these new um, jobs from their the mind, you know, the ideas are getting in, yeah, influencers free, and things. Oh gosh, influencers. <laughs> if they didn't Life buy coach. their first ten thousand, I'm on it, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know I don't know which influencer to trust. That's my problem. It's like who which, bought their way there, you know, in a way. I don't know. what to trust? Because some influencers buy some followers, right? That's how they start. I keep hearing about influencers. I don't know what they do. You know, I don't know how they do it. And you're right, the followers you can pay for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I just um that's why I don't really pay attention to it too much. I'm going to tell you a story. I shouldn't tell the story, but I'm telling it. I was in the office of Billboard. When we went to Sunny Records when I was a kid, home that Michael Jackson, they took me to the office of Billboard Record, a Billboard magazine. You know, and, um, my, my manager and then went in there with the, the people. With, the guys who were doing the charts were like sitting there working the charts. And I was always watching them. And I'm like, this kid. And I'm saying, oh, he's been on the charts number one too long. Put him in number two. Put him in number three. And that's, how, and that's how they were doing it. And I was like, it was like a second. You know, and I'm looking at them, and then Tiger goes, "Welcome to the real world. Welcome to the real world, kid." You know, and um, and that kind of, hmm. you know, that's that's the epitome of, of like real trust in the, right. the media, the system, and everything, how it works. Hmm. You never know, you know, you never know. No, you don't know what's uh, altered and what's not, right? Right. All these hit records and things, you don't know how they became, you know. Who, What's really going on? No, there's a lot of re <laughs> there's a lot of reasons which we don't have to get into. But we don't, um, right? No, it's that's a whole other episode of uh, lots of things. I won't even say, but yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, that's Hollywood. Just, that's the Hollywood episode. Well, I'm just trying to be learning to be more aware of myself and um, what I'm doing, uh, and, and really looking. People all my life have told me you need to look inside and. I never understood what that meant, and I'm starting to understand what that means, you know, so. Well, you've been doing I, a lot of yoga, right, which is awesome. Yeah, I've been doing yoga that saved my life, that, yeah, meditation, you know. I haven't Good been meditating you. enough lately, but. Me neither. <laughs> Let's do it tonight. Promise? Okay. I promise. Okay. I haven't done it a lot much either, but I think about it every day. It's weird. Like, you think about it every day, but you can't always do it. It's weird, right? <laughs> I think about yeah, I should do it, you know. But when I was really doing it, and I was really focused twice a day. Like, uh, wow. two years straight, I was meditating twice a day. Wow. Natural high. Why not, right? Yeah. It was, a, <laughs> it was like, yeah. Yeah, natural high. You were floating around like, this place. Years. But <laughs> I actually, I started liking it because my mind was, like, constantly, like, just terrorizing me. I'm thinking all these thoughts, and it just slowed me down. And I felt good. And that's what it does. That's its okay. benefit. It does a lot. It clears your mind. It slows it down. It it does so many good things, meditation. It helps your immune system. Yeah. They say all the great people, they say meditate, you know. Yes, yeah, so, right, a big, all all greats, right. Um, we are running out. We have like a minute or two. Do you want to say something to the... Uh... Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My mom and my dad, um, my brothers sisters and uh, my friends and people that have been supporting me and everything that's been like believing in me you know like my friend my close friends and you and thank you for having me on here because I'm pretty <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was nervous coming on you know coming on this is very nervous no, for no reason right <laughs> yeah well because you making me more calm but 
Yeah. But it's it's if we're just hanging, that's it. That's what that's why I like this because I just hang with people. <laughs> I like that, and I like how you keep that we're just hanging thing going. You know. Yeah, Janet uh, said you made me just you made me laugh. I always think about yoga, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, and I have this great yoga teacher. She's like cool, you know. She's crazy and. Just like I want to be when I get old, you know? <laughs> yeah, like chill. Oh, I am old. Cool. I forgot. I'm old. Some people don't think I'm old. Your, sp your spirit, your soul is, but you're not, my friend. <laughs> don't, uh, don't say it. I know. I just want to let you know there's a lot more opportunities now for our LGBTQIA plus people. So go look for them. There's open calls opening up. Like, really get out there, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's for people listening, too, because... The world is opening to all people now, and the opportunity is there. We just have to go. You kind of have to. It comes to you, but you have to go searching for it sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? For me, it's, I feel like, you know, like you bring, you bring on the show here, um, a lot of the, the background work that we've been doing, it's all leading to something, you know, and I don't know where it's going, um, but I'm just taking it day by day, you know. Just, right. Yeah. That's how you have to do it, right? That's how I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. To be grateful. <laughs> I'm happy. Gratitude. Yeah, grateful. Oh, we should do yoga together soon. I'll do yoga with you. Do it. Yoga in the park. In the park. In the, yeah. Right. I got the East River Park right across the street from my house. Really? Yeah. I used to live on the um, Upper East Side. I'm not on the Upper East Side, though. Oh. I'm on the Lower East Side. <laughs> oh, you're all the way on the... Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. I'm on the Lower East Side. Yeah. Well, there's some, city, baby. <laughs> some good yoga studios, too. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, just coming to your studio with you for the... They have, they have some good ones. And they're opening up again, so... But, oh, um, finally. I've been doing yoga on Zoom now. My teacher charges me, charges us all 100 bucks a month, and we do, she does every day, teaches us classes. Wow, every day. And it's like next to nothing. It's like nothing, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to see you. You look great. You sound great. I can't wait to see you in person again. Same here. Thanks for having me on your show. Ka Khaled, Colin, Steele. Yeah. <laughs> Khaled, don't make fun of my exit. <laughs> it's all good. It's been a pleasure. You're a very, you're a fascinating person. You've overcome so much, and I love, love having you. Love Thank you, you for sharing. Love you, man. Text me. Thank call you. me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Peace. Bye. Is he awesome? He is a great guy. Thank you. Uh. Thank you for watching. You know the usual. I, I hope everyone had a great Pride Month. This is Pride Edition. That's why I'm holding it. It's cool. A kombucha Pride. Um, I hope someone, everyone learned something. As we say, meditate. I got to go meditate. Breathe, stretch, dance, live. You know, express yourself. Be yourself. Love yourself. Thank you again. I love you. And I'll see you next week.